Uh, welcome to this Wednesday's edition of the Age of Quarantine on St. Vitus Bar. My name is Caroline Harrison. I am an artist and illustrator and I also do marketing stuff for St. Vitus. So um, I am your host tonight and I'm really excited because I get to talk to Matt King. Uh, Matt is from Portrayal of Guilt. It's probably why you're here. It's almost entirely why you're here. Uh, and they are sort of a nice genreless band. I know that the um, Screamo label kind of gets applied sometimes. I don't know that it fits. I don't know that they're, they think that it fits. And I think that's kind of what makes them really interesting. Um, so they have a new album coming out on Friday. Uh, I always like fuck up the name because, you know, but it's called uh, We Are Always Alone. It's on Closed Casket Activities and it will be out, uh, yeah, on Friday. So I am going to see if I can invite Matt to join and give him a second for the connection to work. I'm excited. I hope you're really excited. Uh, yeah. So fingers crossed this works. And thank you for joining. Hello. Yeah, what's up? How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Oh, you know. Um, but yeah, so I don't know if you've watched one of these before, but it's pretty straightforward. Um, just gonna effectively punish you for an hour. So <laughs> that's yeah. cool. And you've been missing the live experience. Well, yeah, jam a, a year's worth of punishment into into this. Um, Sounds good to me. Cool. Uh, and then for anybody who's new to this um, sort of live stream format, if you want to ask questions, um, there's like a little comment <laughs> thing on the bottom. Um, we'll be checking that periodically. Um, I did have a couple of people ask questions ahead of time, and I'm, it was mostly jokey shit. So you're going to have to, you know, talk about corn and uh, <laughs> your dad says he misses you type of shit. So oh, I think I saw that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Nice. But yeah, so uh, I guess sort of to start things off, um, I'm sort of interested in like just how you got into playing music in the first place. So if you want to kind of like talk a little bit about that. Um, well, I was like, I, I guess I was playing guitar and ba well, I started playing bass maybe when I was like, um, I guess maybe like 15 or something. Uh, I was living in England with my dad. He was stationed there. He's in the Air Force. And uh, I wasn't really doing too much. I wasn't really, like, allowed to do too much. And uh, the only thing that was, like, really supported in my house was, I guess, like, playing guitar or bass or whatever. Um, so I was doing that. And then uh, I moved back. Uh, I was around, I guess, 16. And in high school... Uh, my girlfriend at the time, she had joined a band with some with some dudes that I don't didn't really know, and I guess they needed a bass player, yeah. and uh, so she was like, "My boyfriend plays bass. Uh, he, you should have him play in the band." And I was like, "Okay, why not? You know, just like I figured it would be nice to spend more time with her." So I was like, "Yeah, sure, let's go." Yeah. Uh, so basically, I did that. I didn't really know what I was doing uh it was cool i don't know it was like a weird experience like i they ended up kicking both of us out of the band maybe like i don't even know we played i think we played two shows together with them and then they kicked us out and uh let's see uh, i guess after that i ended up joining a couple of other bands like not really serious stuff but i was like super young obviously like 16 so it's like I was kind of just going with the flow. I mean, um, you're you're still pretty young. I don't know how old you actually are, but <laughs> well, I'm, like, I'm thirty. Okay, I was like borderline yeah. afraid to ask because I was yeah, yeah. right where I'm just like, oh no, I'm old as shit. Um, but yeah, yeah so, uh, so you probably were also kind of coming up during the like screamo revival kind of thing when that was like huge. Like back in the early 2000s or like yeah, recently? Yeah, like the mid-aughts kind, of. kind of thing. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I like at the time I was just too young to know anything about that. But I was just like randomly introduced to that through like a mutual friend 
I think it was the promoter of a show that we played with that first band who like ended up staying at my house for like, I don't know, three months or something like that. And in exchange, he, he like had, he had a, when he came over, it was so weird. He, all he brought was a backpack and in his backpack was like a computer, but not even like a laptop, just a full fledged like tower. We legit. <laughs> like a legit computer like in a backpack but anyway he was like yeah you should check out this music so he put all of his music onto my computer and on that was like everything that i know and love today which is you know like page 99 majority yeah. rule city of caterpillar all that stuff and uh then after that i guess like when i was sort of like introduced to other music I guess and music in, in general I guess like I mean I was just skateboarding before that up until then it was like nothing but skateboarding but as soon as I joined a band I was like skateboarding can you know I'd put that on hold or whatever and, and started playing in bands uh but I went through obviously you are at skateboarding also by the way what someone's asking how good you are at skateboarding not very good no, it's. I was good when I was like fifteen or sixteen, and like that was like more than a decade ago. Yeah, wow. so I suck. Uh, but yeah, so uh, after that, I just like went through a ton of phases, like scene phase, sure. and like deathcore phase, and like you gotta all that go kind of stuff. Phases. Yeah, exactly. Like if I hadn't gone through those phases, who knows where I would be today? Yeah, exactly. And I mean, like, some of them I'm sure were also like productive. And one of the things that I think yeah. is sort of, um, especially with the new record, which is fucking awesome. Um, Thank you. One thing that I think is kind of like what makes you guys interesting to me anyway, is that like you hear a lot of like really disparate influences kind of coming through in like a nicely coherent way. So you guys kind of sound like you and that's about it, which I think cool. is awesome. Um, but somebody, I asked a question that sort of like kind of goes off of this like what kinds of um what kinds of bands would you say like really influenced sort of your style as a guitar player shit um well I mean I owe like the first three bands that come to mind which are like my favorite bands would be I mean Korn I uh, clearly yeah. like I love Korn <laughs> Korn is like probably my favorite band of all time I guess it's not like I'm listening to Korn all day every day and I'm like you know, like, like a hot topic kid or whatever. But yeah. the corn has undeniable riffs, uh, and I love them. This is um, something that I did not expect, <laughs> and and then like recently realized that like all a lot of people I know who make really good music that I respect are just really fucking into corn. You know what? That's true. I've actually been meeting a lot of people who really, really like corn, one of which, uh, Austin from Chat Pile. Like when I had first when I had first like seen them and hung out, uh yeah. we like just geeked out about like corn. And I, you could tell that they love corn. You could tell that they love corn. Oh, I just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but there's them and then uh Majority Rule and yeah. Interpol. Uh yeah. those three specifically I think probably are like the three most important bands to me, I guess. Interesting. Interpol, yeah. I wouldn't have expected, but it actually makes a lot of sense. Yeah, it's just like uh, dark and evil music, really. Yeah. I mean, obviously not their like newest stuff, but there was a time that it was just like super dark. Yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense. I've been revisiting that lately too. So now I'm just like, I'm, I'm excited to listen to your new stuff like with Interpol in my head also. Oh yeah, there's a definite like uh there's a definite uh part in one of the songs that's like completely inspired by Interpol basically. Nice. I'm sure everybody will pick that up knowing that now. Yeah, well, you know. Um one of the things uh somebody also shouted out your earlier band illustrations. Um so I was wondering oh, if yeah, you yeah. kind of wanted to if if you want to take a moment to just talk about illustrations too, uh we have at least one illustrations fan. Um so illustrations that was probably like the first band that I started um just like I guess just me or whatever uh this was maybe when I was like 20 and um uh, I at the time I was still playing bass like I was still playing bass in another like hardcore band or whatever and uh I I mean 
I'm not good at guitar. I was not good at guitar at that time. So I was just kind of like, I kind of want to start another band, do something else, and then I'll just play guitar and write all the songs. So sure. um, basically, I wrote like a, a record with that and then found some people to play in it. And after that, we just like took it super seriously. Basically from, from 2010 or 2011 to 2016, to like or, or well yeah 2016 that's probably as long as the band was around uh we did a lot of stuff a lot of cool stuff um no one really knows about that band at all which is completely fine <laughs> uh but it was fun but i only sang in that band uh, oh, okay. so like I, I wrote like the first music and then found other friends who were down to do it and then uh at that point i was just doing the vocals and stuff and basically that band for me well, it was just like a huge learning experience just sure. within within like you know like music and growing in that aspect but also like uh the just like promo tactics and like different ways to do things and yeah. like how to release a record and like stuff like that uh but yeah yeah that band's not a thing anymore <laughs> yeah well but it's sort of interesting also that you mentioned like the sort of like learning how to like release a record and tactics and stuff like that. Cause one of the things that I, I, cause I, I did a little bit of my homework for this. So I like read a couple of interviews, but um, yeah. one of the things that I thought was really cool is there was one interview where you sort of talked about your approach to like the visual side of the band and like the marketing and promo materials. And like, obviously like that's how I know you. Um, but I like, the way that you have like the flyering for this album for instance i think is like a fucking cool um strategy and i was wondering if you could sort of talk a little bit more about your relationship to like the promo side of things as far as like materials and artists and stuff and i know chris taylor's gonna come up and i'm really excited about that <laughs> uh so with the well the the whole f idea with the flyers is just like uh i mean back in the day like I'm sure we all sort of like subscribe to like street teams and stuff like that at one point. Um, and obviously you see like flyers all, all the time. I mean, especially maybe not now, but uh, yeah. say like during South by here or whatever, yeah. and there's like flyers all over the place and like stuff like that. I always thought that was cool. Obviously a great way to promote. Um, and went earlier, like I when we started the band at first or whatever anytime we would play a show in town we would go out and post flyers for the show around town and stuff and like that just seemed to work um but for the album i just hadn't seen like the street team thing being done like lately i mean obviously it's being done but it, yeah. i just hadn't seen like uh that kind of thing and i figured you know uh that could be something cool you know, if I mean, if you want the record for free, we'll give it to you. If you just take, you know, go post a flyer up in your city. I just felt like it was like a win-win, you know, yeah, getting people involved and like helping yeah, with promo of and stuff. Quarantine shit. So everyone's like sitting at home. Also that too, a reason to go for a while. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, like, it's also sort of interesting because like, obviously like living in New York, I see flyers posted up all the time, but like oh, yeah. there is for like much bigger like i don't know like some fucking crazy ass arena concert gets flying. yeah yeah for sure what okay but yeah i don't know i think there still is sort of like that um relationship with like record stores and coffee shops and shit like that and it, it just sort of it was interesting to me to see you guys kind of do that on like to support an album that you guys won't really get to tour on probably yeah. a, like a lot <laughs> a long yeah. for like a year probably yeah yeah Which it sucks sucks but whatever what can you do really nothing right now which <laughs> yeah. was yeah i know um but yeah like i thought also um in that particular interview too you kind of like talked about your own um i guess not quite identity as but like you talked about your own um, experience as sort of like a graphic artist as well. Um, and is, I don't know if that's something that you just sort of like restrict to doing the promo kind of side of things, or if that's, you know, something that kind of was something you were interested in anyway, and it sort of took this 
direction, but. Oh, as far as like the graph or like the artwork or. Yeah. Well, I, I was just sort of like uh, the earlier stuff that we've done. I did. Um, I, I was just kind of messing around having fun. Like, you know, I had like a printer and a scanner and like go to Kinko's and like mess around with like Photoshop and whatnot. Yeah, so that I, eventually I just got kind of like, I don't know, burnt out on it. So I haven't really done it too much anymore. Um, but as far as like, I'm like, I'm like better at, uh, let's see, being creative with like art. Like I'm not good at, I don't know, the visual aspect of art. Like I can't draw for shit. I can like put things together and make them look cool or whatever. I'm good with like maybe what it, what would I call that like a layout or something? Yeah, it's like it's a like graphic design ish, but it's like uh, you know just graphic arts in general. It's a lot. Yeah. Of people think though, like don't sell yourself short. That sh that shit is hard. I can't do that. Yeah, it, it definitely gives me a headache. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. But yeah, I don't really do it anymore. I should, but mm. whatever. Eh. now well now you get to like pick other people to do it um well yeah i definitely like that part i really really like that part actually and that's that's one of the things actually also that i think um chris taylor came up last week because i was talking to um ellie joe gill who's a an artist based, based in richmond so like she she like knows chris and stuff like that um but uh we were talking about how cool it is when people kind of um use the same artist like album to album um so i was wondering if you could kind of talk a little bit about like why you ended up going with chris initially and sort of what that working relationship is like um um well first of all i mean like i love page 99 and all of their artwork it's just yeah. so amazing um obviously obviously like you know i well like a lot of what we do is very similar and a lot of like the art is very similar as well but obviously chris has also done like a ton of different covers and whatnot his art is just like amazing it's fun. one of a kind like there is no other chris taylor yeah. like it's just you know it's him and it's you just so it's amazing him, like immediately which is exactly awesome. um but yeah like uh i think it was earlier and when we started, like, we had a seven inch come out and uh, we ended up going to New York to play with Page 99 and Majority Rule. Uh, we played like one of their first reunion shows. Mm -hmm. And uh, just at that show, I, we were able to like meet all of them. And uh, that was like the first time I talked to Chris. And like, I, I can't remember what we talked about, but we definitely talked. And that's when we sort of like started a relationship there. We went back and forth a lot and uh i mean the rest is history basically well is that how you guys uh because i know that uh early in like the the days of portrayal of guilt as a band you guys did some pretty uh extensive road stints um oh yeah and i know i know you also went out with like page 99 majority rule a little bit as well right yeah yeah um, so I, I assume, did you guys get connected to them through that show or did you like? Um, well, <laughs> randomly enough, and this is like almost an unreal like story to even think about. So first of all, obviously, like one of my favorite bands ever is Majority Rule. Sure. And uh, obviously that was a lot of the inspiration into how we sounded, especially at first. Um, like not too long after we started the band, I was just like, skimming on Facebook one day and I saw a video and it was majority role practicing. And uh, I was just like, what? <laughs> like, cause I, I, I'm pr I was pretty sure that they were never going to play ever again. Yeah. Uh, so seeing that I was like, Oh shit, that's, that's crazy. Um, after seeing that, I basically looked all around for uh, an email that I could find. I figured that they would play shows or something. So I was mm -hmm. like, Hey, uh, I, I wrote him a long email or something like that. And I was just kind of saying like, uh, if you ever play in Austin, I will book you. Yeah. And then we'll play, of course. Um, so I never got a response to that email ever. And uh, But what's funny about that is like, I can't remember if we had done a tour already or we were about to do a tour. Uh, Matt from Majority Rule just sent us an email randomly. And it was basically like along the lines of, 
hey, uh, just found you guys a seven inch or whatever. I haven't heard anything like this since like, uh, you know, this or this. Um, we are doing some reunion shows with Page 99 in the US and Europe. Would you be interested in playing? <laughs> and we were just like, it was like, yeah, it was my, I just remember being at a uh, friend Rick's house uh, who, who used to play in the band. And we were just like, I think we were just like watching a basketball game or something. And I was like, yo, you got to see this. After that, I like called our drummer James and I was like, yo, you got to get over here. <laughs> Let's party. Like we were so stoked. It was crazy. So at the time we were like, oh, oh shit. Like we're going to play with Majority Rule and Page 99 and in Europe too. Like, what is this? That's like your favorite band hitting you up you know, just genuinely excited about what you're doing. So that was just like mind blowing and uh, super exciting. So that's how we got in touch at first. Um, we had done a couple of shows with just majority rule before the one with page 99, but then they invited us to go with them on the West coast. And we spent, I guess, maybe like a week or so together. And that was amazing. So oh, I don't fun. know. Yeah, it's just really random. <laughs> it's really random how that happened. I mean, sort of like a miracle or something yeah it's definitely i don't know that it's random because it wouldn't have happened if he didn't like your shit so right right um it was great that's fucking fun but so then like that's how you got to know that guy, those guys and like you recorded at one point and um i know there are also uh there are two guest spots on the new record as yeah, well. yeah 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 mm -hmm. yeah for matt and chris yeah yeah and Matt recorded your previous one? Yeah, we did the first LP with Matt at his in his basement. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah Well, that's cool. Cause I know because we were talking at this point, um, you guys were recording like right when shit was starting to get real spooky with the pandemic. Oh, yeah. So, well, basically we were on tour, I think it was like early March and... Uh, I don't even remember when we first heard about it, but it was definitely in our heads when we left. Mm -hmm. um, but initially what our plan was to do that tour, come home, then record the album, and then go from there. Um, but uh, what is it? We had to come home early. We were in Atlanta, so we just canceled the rest of the tour, came straight home. Uh, our practice space that we were going to record the album uh got locked down completely so basically we had to like take all of come home and then like take all of our gear out take it home uh and then uh our friend phil who recorded this album he i guess made a few calls and uh somebody had like a cancellation or something maybe like the week after we got home in an actual studio so uh we we just like we're like screw it book it and uh, we did. So we basically got home and booked this like studio. It was like a huge space. It was pretty amazing. Um, nobody was there, of course. It was like he the windows were humongous. Like so the energy was great and there's sun. In and so that's so nice, especially when nice. you're recording. Uh, and that was also the first studio, like actual studio situation that we were ever really in but we yeah so we spent basically like a week and a half on that uh record there so it's not too far off from like our original plan but yeah it, timing yeah. shift because it had to which yeah basically yeah sucks so but so then you you basically had everything written already yeah we had the whole thing written before we left uh on a tour in january i think we had just Usually we're like a few steps ahead. So we're always like trying to make sure that it's, so everything was kind of okay. Like it didn't like ruin anything too crazy. I mean, it ruined all of our touring. It, but yeah, it, was... it ruined everything for the next year, but like, you know. Yeah, or two years maybe, but yeah. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so then uh, I guess as far as like figuring out how to release a record with all of this shit going on. I know you guys were sort of debating it for a little while. Um, yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, because of the, uh, the like, the vinyl shipping time, it's just, like, I, I mean, uh, Justin from Closed Casket, like, handled all that stuff. Like, basically, I was just, like, on the phone with him about it. 
I was like adamant about trying to get the record out in 2020. That was like the original plan. Mm -hmm. Um, But we had to like, we had to, we were basically just like pushing it, pushing it, pushing it, pushing it. Uh, So that kind of sucks. So it was supposed to be out in 2020. Yeah. Well, I know also like there just like there were like weird like vinyl production shortages. There was also, I feel like there was something burned down maybe. I don't know. There was some weird thing. I think I might have heard something about that, actually. Yeah, you're right. And, like, everything was ruined. Yeah. Or something. It was, like, some plant that handled, like, a surprisingly large amount of the vinyl in the world. (laughs) Yeah. Like, why did that happen? I don't know. (laughs) It literally ruined everything. (laughs) A terrible thing. But, yeah. Um, Shit, what was I going to ask you? Um... But yeah, so then like, obviously you guys, uh, you know, you're, you've done like a lot of touring. Um, mm-hmm. So I was kind of wondering how, because you've also put out like kind of a lot of music. Um, oh, yeah. I know a you little, guys, yeah. and I'm going to, I'm going to make you talk about all the splits and stuff. But um, Yeah, for sure. But as far as like, how you're able to kind of balance the like constant, not constant, but near constant touring plus like the writing and like still manage to get much material out there um i don't know i guess it's just good planning (laughs) really uh because i mean since we started we've basically been on tour like uh that was just our general idea like our general plan um but basically like i guess we i mean we haven't really been like signed to a label until close casket so we've just been free to do it literally whatever we want. Um, So I think, what was it? Uh, I think we did a split before we did our full length. Uh, I think something like that. We did a split with this band Street Six. I'm pretty sure. Like totally no. (laughs) I would have to think about it. There's so much on my mind. So uh, as far as like when it happened, I can't really remember, but I think yeah, like we did a, a split with Street Sex. That was fun. I think the reason that we even did that was because uh, that song that we used for that was initially supposed to be on the album. Oh, okay. But uh, so because we also recorded it with Matt and uh, we were just like, you know, what, let's just use this and like put put out a split of Street Sex. Because um, at that time, uh, I was actually living with them. Like we all lived together in a house, which is kind of how it happened. That's handy. Um, yeah, I know. Right. Like super easy <laughs> to take care of. <laughs> But uh, yeah, so we had the album coming out after that. So that was like two releases that had already been recorded and taken care of. So that was really convenient. Um, Basically, knowing that we had to tour, or I mean, we didn't have to tour, we wanted to tour. But uh, I don't really know. I mean, we would definitely schedule tours ourselves. I can't remember. I think we did. I can't. This is so hard to remember we went to europe (laughs) we went to europe pretty quickly as well i remember um i think at that point like we had done a couple of tours we were just kind of like this is fun like let's just keep doing it and then also at the same time it's like we get to travel and go all over the place and like see all this stuff you know and it's just like we just love it so much because of how much honestly effort does not go into it because we seriously are just fucking around and that's the funniest part and so it's just like uh it's just one we want to travel all over the place and i don't know it's just fun but uh yeah i don't know it goes back to planning i guess and we were also getting i don't everything honestly and it goes with the whole majority rule like hitting us up kind of thing everything has sort of happened like luckily it's just luck or something i don't know it's really weird how things have worked out just luck but yeah there is like and i think that's sort of a a funny thing because like you guys will definitely encounter some bands where you like love what they're doing and then you're like why does nobody know about you um and it's because they haven't encountered someone yet who like you know can be like hey come on tour with us or like hey right you know let's like post your shit or something like that um, yeah for sure somebody wants to know how did ecstasy in reverse come about because that song is so sick oh that's awesome um 
Well, I, let me think about that. Well, we had, we'd always been talking about like doing a collab, like a collab album with Street Sex. Um, we just like, we did that tour together uh, in January, last January. Uh, damn, that was a year ago. That's crazy. <laughs> oh my <Yeah>. God. <laughs> uh, anyway, so we talked about it a lot on that tour because uh, me, both me and James were playing in Street Sex uh, for their sets as well as our own. Oh, no. So, yeah, so we were sort of like already kind of learning uh, yeah. their set and like how things worked and whatnot. Um, but the 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 little collaboration song that we did uh, was just sort of like random for fun kind of thing. Like we were already like quarantining and stuff like that and just at home doing nothing. And uh, I would talk to Leo a lot. Like we would just talk all the time, pretty much every single day. Um, and so Sean like sent some drums over. So James recorded drums at his place. Uh, I went over to their house to do vocals there. And then I ended up mixing, mixing and mastering it uh, myself. Sure. Um, so it was like super fun. It was just random, like just something fun to do. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> that's how that happened. <laughs> well, and uh, one thing, this is sort of a left turn but um, you have those two splits that have that like very, um, oh God, now I'm blanking on his name. The, there's that famous artist with the veiled figures kissing the surrealist who- Oh very, yeah, yeah. I'm blanking on his fucking name. Um, dude with the apple in front of his face. Right, I don't even know his name. You have like, uh, oh, the split with Sock Kill that we did. Yeah, so- But you they... also have the two, like, so there's the one- oh, right. Got the veiled figure like coming. oh right yeah the split with slow fire pistol yeah i don't know was there sort of like a deliberate uh connection between those two different pieces of art <clears throat> um no randomly enough they do Mag they do look a lot the same that it's very crazy yeah um it's magritte by the way um, okay okay yeah oh yeah see that slice <laughs> um uh, yeah, like that was unintentional. Also, the artwork for our EP was also unintentionally very similar to yeah. our previous artwork. Um, but uh, yeah, the the cover for the Soft Kill split was all like they Soft Kill already had artwork. Oh, okay. uh, and I guess so. That was just a photo that someone took. That's um, a, that's the one with the plastic bags, right? Yeah, yeah. That's um that's Jean Chartier. She's uh, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, Jane Payne um, works around New York, so. Friends yeah, that I thought that that cover was amazing. Yeah. Um, and then I had stumbled upon our friend Sherry. She takes a lot of photos. Um, her work is great. I was just I was just like scrolling on Instagram one day, and I stumbled mm -hmm. upon like that photo, and I was just like, "This is amazing!" And I knew it had to be artwork for something. And so I sent her a message, you know, asking if she would be interested in having it being used for something. Uh, so yeah, we just ended up using it for that split with Slow Fire Pistol. Nice. But, it was really yeah. totally serendipitous. Just yeah, a really random happening. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know if I would have even like really noticed if I hadn't just been like on your Bandcamp page and being like, let's look at all the releases, and then like they're like near each other. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I yeah. think there's only like well, only one piece of art uh, from our albums that's like an odd one out, but I think that was for something very early. Which one would you think of as the odd one out? Uh, it's it's like for a single called Chamber of Misery. It was like uh, it was like pre our first LP. It was just a single. I ended up releasing it on like a lathe, like five inch or whatever picture disc. It was ridiculous. Why not? Yeah, right now, exactly. <laughs> so I just love stuff that people have hard time a hard time playing. Yeah. Yeah, it's the best. <laughs> Wait, did, you, did you guys put that one out yourself? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Because that, that leads me to one of my other questions. I know you guys are uh, starting slash have started more of like a, a formal label. Um, yeah. Yeah, so I was so, wondering... Well, sort of. Yeah, sort of, yeah. I was wondering if you could sort of talk a little bit about... Um, kind of the the creation of that and just sort of like how it came to be and sort of where it's maybe headed um let's see i don't really know like when it started technically um i think 
at the time, this was, damn, this was a few years ago, but like I have another project that I was doing with our, uh, our friend Rick, who used to be in the band. Mm -hmm. And we, we just did like a tape. It's just like some like lo-fi punk music, whatever. Um, and we were like, we should just put this out on tape. Cause you know, why not? And so that release would be the, the first one that we put out on our label. Mm -hmm. Um, at the time, our friend Ian was sort of helping me with the cassettes, like making that. He was kind of handling more of that, so it was a lot easier. Um, and that was, I he was mainly working on that with me because we were on tour all the time and couldn't really handle it. Um, but that's kind of like when it started. We ended up doing like, uh, what is it like, maybe like seven releases. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I think based if if i'm remembering this correctly it was like seven and then two forthcoming or it's yeah three forthcoming uh I th so i guess seven we did seven before i was like you know what i think maybe because i wasn't sure about kind of like separating the label from like the band because it's the same thing like it's it's technically also called portrayal of guilt like it's but it's obviously <laughs> It's different it was just hard to sort of like separate it so i guess it took like that many years to figure out how to do that which is so dumb but i just was like you know what screw it i'm gonna do it i'm gonna make like a separate page and like do this and and maybe i'll just take it more seriously especially now because it's like there's nothing to do and so i have plenty of time to be working on stuff um so yeah i just like uh, i just did a release for our friend god is war who actually did all of the noise on our album Oh, no so shit. yeah yeah he has his own like noise projects uh that are amazing um so yeah we just did a cassette tape there and like basically the next upcoming stuff are just like side projects of mine um there will be a portrayal of guilt release on the label uh soon actually and that'll be i think our first or second final because i'm just sort of like learning how to do that myself so we'll see i don't know I, I might like make it a real thing or it might just be like a hobby <laughs> so we'll see yeah it's you know you already know how to do the rest of it so yeah yeah i'm just it's just it just goes along with like kind of like testing things out yeah. just seeing how it goes you yeah, know it doesn't matter either way <laughs> yeah well and all the stuff that you guys have put out with that so far too it's like mostly kind of odd like physical stuff right too you're mostly putting out like cassettes and like the yeah disc thing yeah 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 what even, what even is that like uh to be like i mean it's just a a format that sounds like shit it's like vinyl but it's not or something and it, it sounds it's just like the I know a lot of people that do lights and that's cool. Sure. They just sound like, they just sound like shit. Even like the company that we go through f to do those, even there's even a like little sheet inserted in there. That's like, just so you know, it's going to sound like shit. As long as you know that that's okay. <laughs> so at least it's pretty, it's pretty hilarious. To me, it's hilarious. No, that's actually really funny. Um, this is a complete tangent, but I think, uh, I think it was dummy when Portishead's Dummy came out, I guess people went to like buy it from the store and then they like took back their copies because they were like, something's wrong. This sounds like scratchy and old. Really? Yeah, I don't, it's funny. I gotta look that up. Yeah, I, I swear I'm not making this up and I'm pretty sure it was Dummy, but I don't. I think it would be hilarious if people did that with our albums. Yeah. Well, if you don't have the little insert warning them that the lathe <laughs> is going to sound... Well, but... I don't know if I'll ever do a lathe again. So okay. we'll see. I don't know. No. Oh. God, I'm going to have to look that up because now I'm, like, desperate to know how that's made and, like, why it sounds weird. I'm going to look that up afterwards. Okay. For sure. <laughs> cool. I wrote down questions that, of course, I'm not able to access right now because I turned off that Wi-Fi, but... Um, we also do have uh, a bunch of folks who are stoked in the comments. And somebody also mentioned, saw you guys play with Deaf Heaven. Oh, um, yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. That was probably in Europe. That would make sense. Um, I guess one of the things that I, I, because I started being aware of you guys because of the, um, the Page 99 
majority rule thing. You also, did you guys play an Amon Ra show? At, no. Uh, we never did, no. It was a uh, Weej dude. Yeah, maybe. yeah. We were on tour with them, uh, with Skeleton Witch as well. That's what it was. Okay, yeah. Um, Cause I, and I started being aware of you guys at that point, but then when I like went back to like make sure that I had literally anything to ask you about besides like punishing you about the new record, <laughs> um, I also noticed like you guys managed to get like a lot of really cool coverage really early. Um, oh yeah, definitely. Post years were on NPR like. Oh I'm yeah. Kind of wondering how that like, especially because that was in like 2018, um, what that sort of did like, I don't know how how the fuck did that like. Um. Go? So that I, you know Shannon right? Yeah. I, I mean, you guys talked. <laughs> uh, so she she was working for us uh for that first oh. um for that first album and she just did an amazing job like i we had never even seen press like that ourselves really i mean before her i was just sending out emails myself to just see uh if anybody would give a shit <laughs> But yeah, no, she she did an amazing job. And yeah, how she scored that NPR like full album stream, that was crazy. I remember waking up on the floor uh in LA, I think, when we were on tour, we were on our friend April's floor and uh we woke up and we were like, "Oh shit." And it was just like a full on full album stream through NPR. It was amazing. That's fucking awesome. Yeah, Shannon is magic and wonderful, and if anybody has a band, I'm going to plug Perfect World PR. Yeah, do that. Great and just also a sweet person um she's amazing yeah uh someone also wants to know what your favorite neil perry song is uh fading away like the rest of them probably the one with the iconic drum fill of course that's everybody's favorite song sure uh and then somebody else wants to know how you got robbie from uh hhll to do some art oh um let me see. I think I just had noticed uh, that they were on Instagram, Heavy Heavy Low Low. Um, they were around way back in the day. I was a huge fan of theirs. Um, let's see. I think we had just sort of like mutually followed each other. And uh, I don't know how I found, like, I don't know how we found each other. But when we did, I was just, yeah, he was posting art or something like that. And I was like, this is, this is pretty amazing. I think he had done uh, their artwork previously anyways. Um, so I just hit him up and sort of was just like, I love your art. Um, would you be interested in doing any? And he was just like, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> nice. So it, it just worked out. I feel like it's one of the things that I think um, is kind of a major theme that you keep bringing up is like, you just hit people up and you ask them and it usually yeah. works out. That's yeah, exactly. It's really weird how that kind of works, but it does. I think that's one of the things about like this sort of like scene in general. And when I say like this, I just mean like sort of the umbrella, like heavy music scene. Um, yeah. You know, like no matter how big the band is or how small, there's always like some amount of connection there's some like degrees of separation and you know yeah it works out right yeah or it doesn't and one like yeah that too no one gives a shit so it's fine <laughs> but yeah um someone also wants to know uh your favorite jerome's dream song that's a good question i don't have one honestly i don't have one i don't really listen to jerome's dream either and I'm sure they're just asking because they know I don't have the, the best opinion. Entire. But cool. yeah, this could I love be. Jerome's Dream. They're great. I just don't have a favorite song. This could be someone just trolling you, Joe Cronin. Just trying to start some shit. Yeah, well, it's fine. You know, whatever. Jerome's it's fine. Dream, yeah, Jerome's Dream is definitely gonna watch 45 minutes into this and be like, what? <laughs> they probably will. No, I, they're they're great. They're great. They're also fucking OGs to, to the Screamo thing, so much respect to them. Um, someone also wants to ask about pedals. Pedals? Because oh, the guitars sound massive. Um, I only, I don't have too many pedals. Um, shit. I use an HM2 and a Tube Screamer together, 
uh i don't know that's that's kind of like where our heavy tone comes from uh i don't know reverb chorus uh delay <laughs> i think that's about it <laughs> i mean i don't know you don't need much yeah I don't, I don't i also don't like the whole like you know when you're playing especially so i have to like we have like a sampler so i'm like hitting buttons on that thing and then uh, playing guitar and then have to do vocals and then at the same time then i have to my feet have to be like hitting the right pedal at the right time it's, it's like a it's like an overload wait so you guys take a sampler with i clearly have not asked yeah. you guys live um because the point at which i started paying attention to you guys as a band like we were all locked inside our apartment <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, oh so yeah we had a sampler yeah. or well we do have a sampler like we our friend rick uh used to do like noise and stuff like yeah, during yeah. our sets and whatnot uh and ever since he left the band we like i just used the sampler that's kind of that that thing has been just like basically filling those gaps nice so it really so. kind of like instead of like uh i don't know it, it keeps it sort of like dynamic and and stuff like that which is yeah nice. definitely it's like non-stop sound so that's great yeah. uh someone also wants to know what your favorite corn song is uh, i mean uh there's so many i don't even i i mean it's on maybe the first song on the uh, follow the leader that's probably one of my favorite songs uh no way on issues that's also another amazing corn song there's plenty i could go on all day god i, just, I yeah corn Really, When's really... the last time you listened to Corn? Have you listened to them lately? No, I no? vaguely aware of them when I was twelve. Yeah, uh, yeah, definitely. They're also very inspiring. I will say. <laughs> I, if you had told me when I was twelve that I would be talking about Corn this much as an adult, I would not have believed you. I don't know. I mean, at, probably when you were twelve and I was twelve, or however old I was when I even discovered Corn, I'm pretty sure that's around the time that they were number one <clears throat> number one yeah above britney spears and backstreet boys i remember seeing them i remember seeing like freak on a leash videos at trl like at my friend's houses because yeah it was the coolest thing ever and so yeah that's like corn is so inspiring that's like my <laughs> goal <laughs> like i want to be i want to be corn where they were at above britney spears and backstreet boys one day one day one day it'll happen I don't know, given, given where Britney and the Backstreet Boys are today, I think that day might be coming soon. <laughs> You're actually right. Um, someone also wants to know favorite Interpol song. Oh, man, I don't know. Obstacle 2 or The New. That's Those two are really, really good. Those are respectable answers. Uh, uh, yeah, those are my favorite songs. Best tour food. And I know tour food is also like a whole thing. Uh, oh God, I'm like the wrong person I even ask about food. I eat horribly. Uh, <laughs> the other two in the band eat amazing. They eat so much better. Oh God, tour in food. What, oh, what God. sense though? Do you just like feed yourself for sustenance, and they like seek out shit, or you're just like I'm going to find the garbage food and eat that? <laughs> well, see, I'm the one that like when we stop at the gas stations i'm like my eyes are like huge and I'm like my mouth is watering over like the hot dogs you know and those are disgusting to be honest yeah. but like for some reason i love them so i'm like totally down with that and chips and i mean beef chips jerky are easy, though like chips and beef jerky are like yeah i know right like i love yeah. that but yeah i don't know i mean this yeah, the gas station hot dog is genuinely just a bridge too far. It is. Honestly, I've never had somebody be like, you know what, that does look good. No, no. one's ever said that to me. At some point, God, somebody somebody calculated the average number of miles that one of those things is able to roll. Oh, a hot dog? Yeah, because, like, just the based on, like, the diameter of the rollers and, like, the velocity of, like... And like how long it's allowed to <laughs> That's hilarious. Someone would figure that out. Um someone also says that they saw you at Amplifest in Portugal. Um and that the sampler was oh, nice. really like took your live show to the next level. Oh, that's awesome. 
What a great show that was. And what a great place. Oh, my God. Yeah. And as far as like fests and stuff, so you guys have definitely done a couple of the, the European fests then because you've done Amplify. Yeah. Any yeah, we were lucky enough to do that. We yeah. did Amplifest and um, what was, I guess Amplifest was the last one. We did another one called Amfest nice. as well, which was like maybe a week before that. And that was really cool. Uh, we got lucky with that. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> I, you keep saying that you got lucky. It's true. I swear. I swear it's true. Had there's, we, <laughs> there's some element of that that's true, probably. But like, yeah, the luck only gets you so far. Like they don't book you because you're lucky. They book you because you're. Well, good. I think that they booked us because they had to because we. That's that's when we were on tour with Def Heaven and Touche Amore. So like, we were a part of that touring package. So it's like if you don't book us, that's just mean. You can tell yourself that, but I'm pretty sure they booked you because they wanted to book you. But that's... Well, if that's the case, thanks. And hopefully they're watching. <laughs> uh, someone wants to know what your favorite kill is from the Halloween series. Favorite kill? Oh, God, I don't even know. I couldn't tell you. All of them. All of them. Yeah. All of them. <laughs> that's a good question. Uh, I, I, yeah. Um favorite tv show i don't know you're you're getting like the the teen beat treatment here. <laughs> well that's a good question a great question because i in fact i watch tv all day every day uh my favorite show currently is 90 day fiance uh Ooh. locked up you watch that no no oh okay well, my bad all right no okay so i watch 90 day <laughs> oh, okay i'm calling myself out here uh 90 day fiance love that show favorite show uh, Love After Lockup. That's also another one of my favorite shows. Um, dang, what else is there? I think right now there's on the TV over there is uh, Real Housewives of Orange County. Some juicy You're stuff in there. You junkie. Yeah, I don't know. It's just it's really mindless TV. I shouldn't be. I shouldn't even be watching TV. It's, no, it's fine. I'm just. <laughs> I, it was not the answer I was expecting. <laughs> I mean, there's only so much on TV. I, I I guess, and this is cable though. I do have YouTube TV, so I do watch regular cable TV, and that's probably why I watch those shows. Yeah, that's fair. Um, what somebody else wants to know: what hardcore guitarists you dig? Hardcore guitarists? Ooh, dang! I don't know. That is a good question. I guess that. I mean, Matt from Georgia Wolf. <laughs> he's the sickest guitarist. Uh, Mike from Page Ninety Nine. Uh, damn. I I, lo I like a lot of writers. Uh, Levi from Weege Dude, he writes amazing stuff. Um, I don't know. There's so many bands. I just I yeah. guess it's I haven't really paid attention to too many too many guitar players, but unless I am like super intrigued with the songwriting, I guess. Hot Cross, that's another band that writes amazing songs. Um, so yeah, I guess then. Or Monkey from Corn. <laughs> Just, I gotta say that. You do. At this point, it's like, you know, it, I'd be very disappointed if you didn't bring up Corn at every possible opportunity. <laughs> also, Griff from Chat Pile. Dude, Him that band is so fucking good and it's so. <laughs> yeah. They're, yeah. It's Around like one of those things, like, like, like I was on my way to work and I guess I was listening to a, like a playlist on Spotify and that song mask came on. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you know that song and God, it's good. It's so good. And I was just like, what is this? And immediately like I look and I'm like, chat pile, what is this? So I like immediately searched their name on Instagram and I sent them a message right there yep. and like, sure enough like they were down to do like a couple of shows on a tour with us and god i was, I was so good like i don't i don't book shows but i really wanted to see them live so i was just like punishing them on instagram being like please play new york please please pay play new york oh they will play new york well, they and will. they'll play new york with us Fuck and it. it will happen awesome. uh it'll happen uh in 2022 probably god. Well, it's funny because like this time last year, I think I had seen like five, not five, I'd seen like two friends, three friends, 
repeatedly post like, oh my God, can't stop listening to chat pile. So I was like, oh, fine, fine. I'll listen to it in Cave to Peer Pressure. And then around this time last year, that meant that I was listening to chat pile, like both EPs back to back multiple times a day. It's just so like unhealthy. Great. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's perfectly healthy. They're amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah someone uh oh the real deep fry claims that he's at the bottom of a chat pile right now and i guess strictly speaking he is one of the more recent chats in what could be constituted a chat pile if you scroll um yeah i don't know they were we've entered horrible dad joke territory and i'm very <laughs> I might miss like my I'm just so like I'm here but I'm not here I don't know <laughs> honestly it's for the best that you don't humor that it would just hurt um, I also right. I don't really I'm not really seeing like a lot of the comments it's a really oh, small yeah. kind of thing at the bottom there but I'm trying to pay attention yeah I, this is this is my uh, seventh of I don't know I've done this a couple of times now so I, I remembered that I'm supposed to be paying attention to that um oh yeah right yeah right I'm just I can't I can't because then I wouldn't <laughs> even know what's going on yeah you're good I'm, I'd rather um, not some okay two other questions converge thoughts converge is the greatest sure greatest of all time perhaps amazing Kurt Ballou, obviously that's another that's another guitarist I should have mentioned that's the thing though, is like whenever somebody asks you one of those questions and like, I will ask you those questions, um, you're always kind of put on the spot and then like 10 minutes yeah. later, you're just like, shit, I should have said. Like, yeah, no, for sure. I also don't ever know what to say. You could ask me something that I know everything about yeah. and you'll ask me about it and I'll forget everything. You just watch me forget the name of Renee Magritte. Like, <laughs> I know who I mean... she is. Are you fucking kidding me? Like. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm right there with you. <laughs> Uh, someone also wants to know Iron Maiden or Judas Priest. Oh my god! I, Iron Maiden was uh, a favorite band of mine growing up. Um, I didn't get into Judas Priest until like way later, so I guess I would say Iron Maiden. Although they're both great. Yeah, I mean, why choose? Uh, exactly. Ah, okay. Uh, does your lyrical content come from anywhere in particular, or are there particular influences? Um. In particular, I mean, I don't, no, not anywhere in particular, no. Like, uh, usually when I write the lyrics, I write them after all the music is already written. Because uh, I, we don't generally demo anything. So I pretty much write them as we're recording or as I have demos from like whatever we're doing. Um, I don't really know. There's like the way that I write lyrics is just kind of like on the spot thinking a lot of it is like storytelling in a way or whatever somewhat like if I don't I don't really know how to describe it um sure. but it's just like a lot of it is personal of course um just like generally like how I feel um but I don't know it's very random I don't even know where it comes from to be honest it takes me like I'll write all of the songs and then later I'll like listen to the songs and like read along the lyrics and I'm just like this is insane this is ridiculous like it makes me look more sad and depressed like <laughs> it makes me look miserable in fact yeah. which I can't deny it I mean, like, not sure but you know the sane among us I think I feel like that's the same response to yeah all of this yeah. Um, but yeah, so so cool. You just like go into a fugue state. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Basically. I get lost and I don't even know where I am. And then I wake up and then they're done for some reason. Okay. So you sleepwalk your lyrics. Interesting. Something yeah. like that. Something like that. It's like cool. the Hangover movies. Yeah. I, I actually have not seen any of those because. You're not really missing too much. <laughs> Your media habits are <laughs> corn reality TV <laughs> and the Hangover movies. Oh, you're right. Actually, that's pretty terrible. And yeah, I'm, I'm doing no good for myself with this. <laughs> you're doing great. Um, okay, time check. So we usually run these things for about an hour because also I don't want to force you to sit here and have strangers watch you talk. Um, for a little, <laughs> it's, it's a weird. I was trying to forget about that. Yeah. I just remembered. I know. 
Uh, but on the upside, um, I wanted to say thank you for taking the time for talking to us. Um, also, thank of course. you for talking to me. I was, it's nice to like meet you. Yeah, for sure. Nice to meet you as well. Yeah. And congratulations on the new record. Uh, and thank you. I would assume that everybody who's gotten this far is probably like pre-ordering or like, you know, waiting till band camp or whatever. Pre-order, oh, pre-order this. Pre-order oh, the record. Me. Very cool. Yeah, this, this thing looks great. It's amazing. It feels good. It looks good. It no, sounds no. good. Buy this record. <laughs> uh, and I know like a lot of the fun colors, uh, you guys have definitely already sold out of a lot of cool limited variants. There is a really cool like splattery kind of thing. I think that's still in stock. So there's a few and uh, there might be another one. I don't know. Maybe tomorrow or the next day. Stay tuned. Cool. All right. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time. And I really appreciate it. And be safe and stay tuned. And I don't know. Congrats. Thank you. Thank you so much. It was great talking to you as well. Cool. All right. And thanks, everyone, for tuning in. See ya.